my name is Estrella Vargas and I am a proud employee here at CAN TV. As a run of elections approach, we're inviting a lot of the candidates onto political forum to speak uh, to them about their platform. And today we have Rafael Rafa Yanez. Yes. Gracias. Thank you so oh, much for, for uh, joining us today. So to, uh, congratulations on, on being uh, moving forward. Thank you. Uh, so today we're going to ask him a few questions about his his platform and his candidacy and why he believes that he should be uh, the alderman for the 15th ward. So to start off, what motivated you to become alderman of the 15th ward? You know, uh, there's a lot of reasons, but I uh, overall I feel that I'm just, I'm tired of corrupt politicians that have decided to uh, not fight for the interests of the people in our communities. Uh, I mean, we have a, in the 15th Ward an alderman that uh, received money from the GEO Group. This is the largest uh, private prison institution that is also separating families in the border. And not only, you know, the, uh, as it relates to the, to the immigrant uh, subject, but also, you know, when we talk about just prisoners in general that are, you know, mistreated. This is an institution that uh, is giving money to him, right? And we have uh, a big percentage of Im an immigrant community in the 15th ward. So that's, that goes against our values. It goes against, you know, the people that, that he should be representing. Also, I mean, we have uh, a lack of affordable housing uh, in the 15th ward. When we look, for example, at West Inglewood, West Inglewood has a tremendous amount of this investment you know, over 119 properties that has been demolished and only two new constructions for affordable housing. This is the, the highest number across the, the city of demolished properties and the, and the lowest number of new affordable housing across the city. Uh, our schools, you know, our public education, is, it's, uh, it's suffering. We have the only public high school in West Inglewood, Harper High School, that is in the list to close. So, I mean, he's ignoring everything. I mean, we had the mental health, the only mental health clinic that had Spanish-speaking personnel in back of the yards. And we have a tremendous amount of need of early childhood education and access to after-school programs and programs for our youth and jobs for our families in Brighton Park and across the 15th Ward. So I feel that we need leadership. We need true leadership that really fights for the interest of the community, not the interest of the few. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Uh, so I want to show the viewers your uh, the territories that uh, encompass the 15th ward. And it's kind of this weird shape, yeah. which includes small sections of different neighborhoods. So can you explain what neighborhoods you represent, you yes. would represent? Yeah, so as you can see, uh, like here, this is the neighborhood of Back of the Yards, right here. This is the neighborhood of Brighton Park, you know. Uh, this is a, a pocket of Gage Park, and all this here is West Inglewood. Uh, so as you can see, you know, every 10 years there's a census, and then after that there's redistricting. You know, this is a clear uh, picture of... Uh, Divide and conquer, if you will, mm -hmm. because we know that our city is very segregated, and so uh, it's very difficult to to uh, to build unity. You exactly. know, when for so long our communities have been divided. So part of our platform is to form unity, to build bridges, not walls, right? Exactly. And so that's what we're trying to do here with our with our campaign as well. And so how would you, knowing that there's different neighborhoods involved, how would you uh, unite and yes. keep them informed, you, keep your constituents informed about what's going on in their specific neighborhoods and in their ward? Yes. So I think uh, the beauty of this is that I, I live in the 15th ward. You know, I mean, my, both of my children were born and raised in the 15th ward. Uh, my son, he's going to be 21 years old. My daughter's 17 years old. I, I go to church, uh, in, so I live in Back of the Arts. I go to church in Brighton Park. I used to work in, in Gage Park, you oh, know, wow. and I have a not-for-profit organization that, that has after-school programs. I raise a quarter of a million dollars, so part of my programs in the, in, in, uh, in the organization serves, you know, children and families throughout the ward, 
And not, not only throughout the ward, but we have students coming from 29 schools in the southwest side. Uh, when I started uh, uh, as, a, uh, as a, I mean, so as a police officer, you know, I've been a police officer for 15 years. I started here in Inglewood. I started doing the youth programs. I was a youth officer, so I would recruit youth uh, in high schools, and I did like the officer friendly program from kindergarten to third grade. And I'm continuing to do that, so I haven't stopped. You know, I'm very familiar with, uh, with the issues, and I'm just, you know, I'm, it's part of the service that I have committed to, to doing. And uh, it's just exciting. It's a lot of work, but I see it as an opportunity to, to really bring real change that is needed. Awesome. So you mentioned the closings of the schools and how um, that's a big issue that's been happening in Chicago, uh, specifically at CPS schools. How would you, since the alderman basically gets a say of like the project, you get specific projects and you get to decide which ones are should be implemented, yes. etc. Yes. So you're basically deciding projects for for the people of um, of the 15th ward so how would you prevent more closings in your ward yeah. you know I I really believe in uh, first of all I'm, I'm I want to I support a moratorium in, in school closings we should not close any more schools we should really prioritize investing in our schools uh, I think it's irresponsible to think that our future will look bright knowing that we continue to disinvest in our schools. We need to make sure that every school has the resources they need, that the teachers have the support they need to, to make sure they, they do a, a good job in the classroom. We have classrooms that are overcrowded. We have schools that don't have the resources like you know a clinician, a social worker. Uh, we have social workers and clinicians that are rotating and driving around different schools because the 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 board of education, you know, and the and the mayor chooses not to prioritize that. So the way I stop that is to first and foremost, I have to be accountable also. So I believe in participatory process. I want to make sure that the community evaluates me and pressures me. I'm not looking for, you know, good words and, hey, what a great job. I, I'm looking for people to make me accountable and to pressure me to do the right thing. So I want to first and foremost uh, create an instrument where people have a voice at the table, you know. Governance is about the people. And so we shouldn't expect that an alderman is going to know everything. So, But an alderman should listen and should be able to to uh, understand that they're going to be accountable. So uh, there's a lot of organizations in the 15 where they are doing uh, tremendous work. Brighton Park Neighborhood Council, we have Resident Association of Greater Inglewood, Voices of West Inglewood, we have, you know, the Peace and Education Coalition, we have churches, institutions, you know, that are doing tremendous work also like food pantries, uh, so we need to develop relationships and really work with them, not against them. Exactly. You know? I like that. Yeah. <laughs> so gentrification is a huge issue across the city, across the world yeah. in general. Um, what have you seen, what kind of gentrification have you seen affecting the 15th Ward and how would you um, fix that? Yeah, so, I mean, I mentioned to you that there's been, uh, well, first of all, I mean, across the city right now, we're dealing with uh, this Lincoln Yards, you know, mm. uh, boat, right? Uh, the city, they want to give uh, $1.3 billion to this private developer to build, you know, hundreds of condominiums. And the alderman here is in favor of that, knowing very well that we need affordable housing in the 15 ward. So, I mean, obviously, his pockets are full of the mayor's money and Alderman Burke's money. So he's not going to fight for the people in the 15th Ward. He's going to fight for the interest of his political bosses, like the Alderman Burke and, and the mayor. So here, I mean, we, I mentioned, you know, that we had over 119 properties demolished in West Inglewood and only two new constructions for affordable housing. Now, this is, this is not right, you know. There's a lot of families. When we look at the, 
at, uh, at, at the numbers of families that have left the city of Chicago. The highest number is black families. Over 200,000 black families have left the city of Chicago. We need to do more. We have to do better. And they're leaving because they don't have access to good schools. They're leaving because they don't have access to affordable housing. They're leaving because they don't feel safe. They're leaving because they don't have good access to living wage jobs. I mean, they're leaving because they have political and corrupt politicians that decide to give them their back. So that's, this is why, this is why we, we need to make sure that we encourage people to come out and vote. You know, we had the second lowest turnout across the city in the 15th Ward. Mm. You know, we have to do more. We have to make sure that we elect people that are going to fight for us, you know, and this is why I'm running. Yes. So why do you think a lot of people didn't vote? There's a, there's a, I feel there's a lot of reasons, right? I mean, there's a tendency to think that nothing's going to change because, you know, people have lost hope. You know, I, I, I did it before and nothing changed. And so uh, it's, it's difficult to, <coughs> to basically, uh, you know, convince people that, you know, this is, give me a chance, give me an opportunity. Like, I'm not that alderman and, and obviously, Excuse me. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I feel that it makes it very difficult, you know, when we're at the door and, and try to create an image of hope when people, you know, they're losing their jobs, you know, they're struggling, you know. <clears throat> they have to work two or three part-time jobs. We don't have a lot of time to even think about that. Mm -hmm. So... It's, uh, it's about creating awareness also. So, I mean, I just hope that this, this job is not, it doesn't stop in, in one election. It has to continue. We have to continue to build, to create awareness, to make sure that, you know, our young people also get involved, that we address, you know, the needs of our seniors as well. I mean, I think it, I mean, just connecting the dots and Building relationships. At the end of the day, is building relationships, and we have to do more in, in doing that as well throughout, not only throughout the ward, but with other elected officials. Because when decisions are being made, a lot of times, you know, these aldermen, they, they fight amongst each other, and the people suffer. Exactly. So let's put the interests of the people first, you know. So I, I feel that's uh, a lot of the reasons that you know, when this map is going to change again in 2020, you know, 2021, 22, right after the census. So people are like, well, how many aldermen am I going to have in less than, you know, 20 years? So you build a relationship, you know, you're like, okay, I got it this time. And now, boom, you're in a different world. So it's difficult, you know, it's a, it's a difficult struggle. But again, we, we have to, we cannot lose hope, right? I tell people, let's not lose hope. Give me an opportunity, you know, as a, you know, as, I mean, I started a not-for-profit organization. I raised a quarter of a million dollars, and, you know, in the 11 years that I have, over 3,000 young people went through my not-for-profit. I've done that as a volunteer. The only reason that I feel this is possible is because I've seen it. I've seen it with little resources, the amount of things that we can do. I just want to continue to serve, and I feel this is the best way to do it. That's amazing. So before we continue, I want to show the viewers where they can reach you. Uh, they can go to rafa2019.com and you can uh, find his contact information where um, his office is located at 20, 4621 South Ashland, 60609. And you can reach him at his office at 773-565-4500. Zero, four five five zero, and these are the uh, his office hours. And you can find out more about his campaign on his website as well. So as we continue this awesome conversation, can you tell us more about your experience as a police officer? And since there is a growing um, distrust of police officers across the nation. What do you 
as a police officer, what do you say about violence in Chicago yeah. and your plan to disrupt that? Yeah, I mean, we definitely have a lot of work ahead of us. Uh, you know, I, I grew up in Mexico and came when I was 11 years old to Pilsen. So I struggle a lot with uh, identity because there was not a lot of programs, you know, after school programs and, and the violence was prevalent in, in Pilsen then. Uh, and so I had to, you know, just find my way around to go uh, to school safely, right? Or to go to a park or, so I experienced a lot of that. Also, uh, one of the things that I feel that helped me to kind of like, you know, stay out of trouble uh, was, you know, joining a sports program in high school, right? I, I started wrestling. So it gave me an opportunity to identify a community, a purpose, right, and, and an identity. Uh, but, you know, every now and then I would get stopped by cops, right? I mean, because I had my hoodies, my, my gym bags, and and I feel, honestly, that uh, during that time I didn't feel that the police department was an institution that was there to protect me and keep me safe. I felt that it was the opposite. Um, and so, you know, uh, when I was in high school and my senior year, you know, I became a young dad. So that was another struggle. Uh, at the time, you know, my parents were separating and I went to live with my dad. You know, he was drinking a lot, so I felt that I needed to be with him, you know, for support. And the, the, the reality is that he was supporting me more than I was supporting him. I guess we were supporting each other, mm -hmm. right? But, you know, uh, rent was getting expensive in Pilsen, so we had to move in, uh, in back of the yards. So I, I got married, you know, and <clears throat> needed a good job, right, and provide a roof and, and food. Uh, during that time, I was also in school, uh, and, you know, I started getting involved in the community. And our first community event, they killed a seventh grader that was helping us clean the streets. And I felt responsible because I was the one, you know, inviting the community to get involved. So I felt I needed to fight for justice. And I felt that that best way was to become a police officer. And, you know, so I joined the police department and started working in Inglewood, like I mentioned. But in the last 15 years, I have, uh, I have grown. And I know that uh, in order to reduce violence, policing is not the answer. So, uh, we have a lot of work. Uh, we need to make sure that uh, we reform the police department. We have to hire better. We have to invest early. We need to make sure we give a chance to young people that understand the pain and the struggle. Uh, and, you know, change the criteria as we're hiring people because sometimes people don't get a chance because of their bad credit score, for example. And that's not good, you know. So. Let's, let's prepare them early. There's a program called the Chicago Police Fire Training Academy. This is a program for high school students, but the funding keeps <clears> getting <throat> cut. And uh, so obviously the pool of young people that are there reduces, you know, every year. So we need to invest there to make sure that we invest early in our, in our students so that we prepare them uh, as they're getting ready to apply and become police officers or firefighters they have been mentored. We need to make sure that uh, when we train police officers that are professionals, right? Uh, training has to be uh, around, you know, making sure that we understand the reality of our communities, right? A lot of people are struggling, right? I mean, when we talk about mental health, we, ha we gotta talk about anxiety, depression, uh, you know, PTSD, right? And so, I feel that uh, we need to make sure that every officer, every, every person that we hired, you know, even if they have, we should give priority to people that have a background in social work, uh, that they have a back background in, you know, in psychology, you know, our clinicians, right? Because they know how to deal with people that are, you know, in trauma. And uh, so also, I feel that uh, we need to change the way we evaluate um, our police officers like uh, right now it's the matrix is it's uh, it's around you know like when, when an officer before an officer goes home they need to put down you know how many people they arrested how many guns how many citations but there's nowhere in there it says how many people you helped how many people how many young people you talked to how many people you took to the clinic 
uh, how many domestic violence you were able to defuse the situation and you know create like a balance and restorative justice type of conversations. I feel that that we have a lot of room for improvement. So uh, I, I believe that we can create a model here for the city. So yes, we have a lot of work in the police department. And the first thing that we have to do is recognize that, that we have to change and modify it and reform the police department. So with my experience, I'm planning to be that voice in city council uh, and make sure that it's not like a us versus them, but it's all of us together, right? Uh, and, and I'm excited. I'm excited. I believe that that can happen. I know it's not going to be an easy process, but I like challenges, you yes. know, so this is why I'm running. <laughs> awesome. I love it. So on the, on the topic of violence, um, recently we heard about the Northside College Prep student who was killed on the north side of Chicago um, due to gun violence mm -hmm. and the killer was 17 years old so he had a in, he had possession of a gun mm -hmm. so we have a lot of problems in Chicago with the infiltra infiltration of guns so how would I don't know if this affects specifically the 15th ward but how will you control um, guns in, yeah. in, in Chicago? So this is this is a, a big problem also in the 15th <clears throat> ward. I mean, we've seen uh, uh, assault weapons use, and I mean, in, in, it's only one of the few uh, wards across the city where we've seen you know assault weapons use in in, in gang retaliation, right? Uh, I'm really interested in, in, in going and working and addressing the root issues of violence. Uh, because, you know, I mean, I don't want to romanticize violence. Uh, people people uh, that, that uh, you know, take someone's life without, you know, any regard to, uh, to their life, and they do it in a manner where they just don't have regard to, to the safety of, of that individual, or to the safety of others, they should be responsible. So I don't wanna I don't wanna confuse and say that I want to romanticize violence because I don't. You know, we're we want to fight for peace mm -hmm. to create peace, not violence. But having said that, uh, there's a lot of things that we need to address. So for example, I know there's a lot of policies and laws that might not be related to or you know that I'm not I, I won't necessarily be the one doing it because I'm an alderman, but I can work with a state representative, with a state senator, with, you know, a congressman, you know. So I, we have to work with other elected officials, you know, Cook Co County Commissioner, to make sure that we close loopholes, to make sure that, you know, like, for example, uh, these uh, businesses that sell, right, the weapons, let's audit them. Let's make sure that we do an audit and make sure that you know every every cell of that of that weapon you know it's it's registered right because sometimes people they buy the weapon and then they report it lost right mm -hmm. or there's a lot of transactions under the table as well uh, so we need to close loopholes we need to make sure that we that we put policies that are holding this uh, we already know where these guns are coming from and it's only a few businesses that are selling these these guns, so there's a lot of transactions under the table. So we need to make sure that we hold them accountable. Also, uh, we we got to talk about the internet, right? I mean, this is a new type of instrument sure. that is being used. You know, I'm not going to mention the name of the website, but from 2011 to now, it went from 12,000 to over 150,000 uh, weapons sold online. Wow. So, I mean, so we have to, this is a new type of, you know, market, uh, market right? <clears throat> so we need to address that and create also policy to address that. And then when we talk about other issues and layers, I mentioned, you know, intervention, right? We need to provide a holistic approach where we, we already know who are the young people that are involved. So let's do, let's help them. Let's really help them. What is it? Is it housing? Is it jobs? Is it mental health? Is it school? Is it child care? I mean, we're spending, the city wants to spend $1.3 billion for this private developer and ignore the fact that 
we have the solution to reduce violence. It's only a small percentage of young people that are really involved in, in, in that crimin, in, in, that, in, in violence, right? Let's make sure that we address that. Let's make sure that we develop a program, you know, a good, a good program that has good management, that has access to a living wage job, that has access to opportunities to restore them, to make them whole again, and, you know, uh, re-entry programs to make sure that when people come out of prisons, they have an opportunity to restore their lives. Sometimes, you know, they're, they're labeled and, you know, they're just, I mean, they're basically, they go back. Why? Because they just don't have the, the opportunities, the access. Uh, they cannot live, you know, in the, I mean, they, they might be homeless too, right? Because, uh, I mean, so we have to do more. Exactly. We have to do more and I'm planning to do that. When I was working in Inglewood, uh, an organization had a, a grant to work with a reentry program, but they they wouldn't give them the information of the people that were coming out of prison, knowing that they were prepared to help them. So we need to make sure that we connect the dots, you know. And let's not wait until they come out of prison. Let's go in and let's build relationships. That's that's uh, intervention. What about prevention? We gotta start early. We gotta start in, in early childhood education. We have over 150,000 uh, young people from zero to three years old that have no access to early childhood education. And that puts a tremendous amount of weight in families and young families because they have to find, you know, uh, they have to find babysitters. And most likely it's gonna be someone that is not a professional. Yeah. And when we talk about, about abuse, right, when we talk about, you know, I mean, we, so, again, we have the solutions. Let's invest in them. Let's make sure that we provide the instruments and the support that we need. And uh, in the not-for-profit that I have, uh, I, I through What the is it called? It's called Union Impact Center. So we have also a mentoring program. So I pay high school and college students to referee. You know, mm. Some of these young people make 400 a month, so we're putting money in their pocket. It's not a living wage job, you know, but it's it's something. Yeah, we can do more. Uh, we also pay parents to help us organize parents. They started a Sumba class, for example, mm. right? And it builds community, and they talk about their issues and their struggle. So I'm, I'm interested in continuing to do that, you know, as an alderman. I, I believe that that we have the assets, our institutions like schools, churches, businesses. Let's connect them. Let's connect the dots, right? Unite. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. And I really love the fact that you touched upon um, getting at the root of things because I study sociology and that's the most important. In order to fix any problem, you have to understand the, the beginning Absolutely. point of it, the roots. Yeah. And a lot of what we're seeing in the city is that people are just cutting off like the obvious, like Absolutely. the surface, and that's the, the how they're fixing it. You know what, another thing also, I feel that there's a lot of <coughs> students that need, uh, they have like special needs, you know, whether it's hearing impaired, whether it's bipolar, it's schizophrenic, right? I mean, special needs in general. And, and we have families that have to travel hours to get the support they need. And, and we see sometimes that, you know, some of the people that get caught up in, in that, they have something that they were, that it was not addressed. Mm -hmm. It's not that they were, you know, that they were, you know, stupid kids, you know? No, very smart kids, very bright kids. They're just you know, not they're, giving the opportunity. They're just not giving the opportunity. They're not giving the resources. So it, it's incumbent upon us to make sure that every single person, you know, uh, it gets an opportunity. Exactly. You know, and, and no, no one should be left behind. Yes, I love it. So uh, we're running out of time, and uh, we want to thank you here at Cat TV for joining us, and we wish you good luck on the, you. in the runoff. Again, if you want to reach uh, Mr. Yanez, on, um, you can reach him at his website, and we uh, here's his number. So thank you so much, and uh, good luck.
Thank and you. We'll see you all very soon. Thank you.